John Updike died on January 27, 2009. He had been for many years one of America's most eminent literary men, a novelist, short story writer, critic, poet, essayist, playwright, and much more besides, a towering figure in our literary landscape. In October, Mr. Updike came to the Times Building, and he and I sat down for an extended conversation about the craft of fiction and the art of writing. I don't really think of myself as writing stylishly. Uh, I think of myself as trying to write with precision about what my mind's eye conjures up. So if out of this the sentences become shapely and vivid, that's great. But I'm really mostly concerned with trying to deliver to the reader uh, my images and my sense of human behavior and of landscape. As to an individual voice, I have written in the first person. In the end, it becomes a kind of a, a trap. The, one wouldn't want to call the masterpieces of first-person fiction uh, monologues, but there is that danger always of never getting outside uh, of that one voice and that one head. Uh, Philip Roth has uh, quite a gift, uh, which has grown of really imagining other people, <laughs> other, other than a bright Jewish nice boy who doesn't isn't content with being nice. Uh, this character certainly recurs an awful lot to the point that you begin to feel on the edge of claustrophobia. But he, he also has freed himself up to write about other people. I guess that's my sense of the writer's mission as a member of society is to try to empathize with other people. Get away from yourself insofar as one can get away from yourself and uh, don't don't write about writers, <laughs> don't write indeed about intellectuals, but try to write about ordinary people. How is it that you, as a novelist, project your characters into situations you yourself might resist? Well, maybe I'm secretly drawn to them. Uh, having uh, uh, taken Flaubert's advice to live as a bourgeois, uh, uh, live as one of the bourgeoisie. <laughs> I, I envy the people who are less bourgeois than, than I. And, you know, we all have anarchic impulses. Uh, Rabbit Run, of course, was about the anarchic wish to, to kick over everything holding you back and run. Uh, he was a runner. He had a moment of grace when he was a star athlete, and, and he's trying to recover that, so he's really on a kind of a quest. Um, Anyway, it's kind of natural, I think, for a writer to be try to make the characters think things and do things that he doesn't think or do. Uh, it's exciting that way. Uh, write, write about somebody who agrees with you entirely, or even to f try to figure out what you do believe, I think, is a, a kind of a, a waste of time. You review Toni Morrison's new novel in, in the latest New Yorker. Um, short story not long ago. Are you writing another novel now? I'm trying to move one along. It's very uh, uh, sticky. It makes me wonder if I really shouldn't hang up my spikes as a novelist. But uh, it involves research and uh, although I complain about other people's historical novels, I seem to be attempting one uh, just to see if I could do it. When is it set? It's set in the first century uh, AD. Oh, really? Uh, and uh, not a century I, I know much about, but I'm trying to learn uh, as I go. And uh, I guess it's all educational. Maybe I'm too old to be educated, uh, I'm beginning to think. Um, however, yes, I'm doing that. And as you say, I have kept up uh, trying to keep my name in the New, New Yorker as a reviewer. And uh, after a long drought as a short story writer, I was happy to have them take uh, two short stories recently. Um, it makes me feel like a real person somehow to get a short story into the New Yorker. Maybe because that's where I began as a writer, as a writer who could actually make a living. So if I can't write short stories, it's a kind of impotence that I uh, resist. Having written so many books over so many years, you now look back and, and see periods when you were writing particularly well. Do you feel your powers are, are not amassed as thoroughly as, as they might have been at an, at an earlier time? I think there comes a moment when you're still full of uh, material untouched by you, but fresh in your mind and uh, seeming urgent. This is your life. This is what you know. Emerges uh, with enough skill to get it down. Uh, and that 
That moment tends to occur in American riders somewhere in their late 20s or early 30s. So we're a nation of burned out uh, talents. Uh, and uh, I always thought I'd resist it. I'd, I'd be like Henry James and just ride away and use my head and be patient and productive and uh, em emulate Henry James. But it's not so easy. There's a way in which the American writer is a uh, sort of a priest. He, uh, Hemingway uh, uh, had it. Uh, those youthful things, the two youthful novels plus the short stories are really quite, you know, they're treasures mm -hmm. of of our, our literature. I still try, and of course I have no experience in that I'm aging. I am also should be, I think, wiser. Don't people get wiser as they age because they know more? What, what they leave out of that equation is that you also forget more, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure it's a net, a net gain. But no, I, I, I'm not ashamed of, of uh, my, my later work, but I do feel a, a certain energy, uh, unforced energy, in the early early stuff, and the first Rabbit Run is still the novel that people associate me with, even though the latter two, the latter three, uh, two of them won Pulitzer Prizes and uh, were generally, you know, reviewed better. But Rabbit, uh, it's nice to be as a writer uh, somewhat knowing, but also kind of naive, because out of out of the naive day comes the sense of wonder. It's wonderful to be able to describe this privet hedge in Pennsylvania and how the guy about to leave his wife runs his hands across the privet hedge. I mean, that sort of detail. Uh, your, your ability to um, care about that kind of detail, I think, slightly diminishes. I don't think we ever valorized any life stage beyond youth in this country. Uh, so we're all uh, failed uh, youths. Um, that is, we were best then life was had more savor than uh, we were more glamorous than uh, all, all ages ago. We, we don't believe, I think, in, this is very full of generalizations, but we don't believe in the wisdom of the aged. They don't put, have a village wise man, you know? And especially now that so many people live forever, uh, even less so. Uh, they're you know, parking in nursing homes and, and uh, old people's homes. So. Uh, and you feel that in our great writers, certainly Hemingway and Fitzgerald, uh, you can't say Faulkner, but uh, those two, uh, their idea of happiness is uh, to be young.